Imagine being able to effortlessly edit and render 4K videos with a breeze, doing 3D modeling in Blender and running AI models locally, and of course, playing PC level games all from a tiny aluminum block. So the question is, can a base Mac mini handle all of this? Well, let's put it to the test and find out. It's been two months with the all new M4 Mac mini, and I've had plenty of time to put it through its paces. In this video, I'll be sharing my real world experience from daily use to overall performance and see if the Mac mini truly lives up to its expectations and the hype. I'll also break down the good and the bad covering all the features that stand out and potential deal breakers and everything in between to help you decide if the M4 Mac mini is the right fit for you. Whether you're considering buying the new M4 Mac mini or just curious about on how it holds up over time, this video has you covered. Now let's dive in. I bought the base M4 Mac mini, which features an M4 chip, which has 10 core GPU, a 10 core CPU, and it also comes with 16 gigabytes of unified memory and 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. I was lucky enough to buy the Mac mini during the Black Friday sale on Amazon, which was at 499. This was a substantial discount at $100 compared to its retail price. Of course, that price only covers the Mac mini itself. To enhance my setup, I paired it with a 55 inch TV. And for my peripherals like mouse and keyboard, I bought the Logitech MX Master 3S for the mouse. And for the keyboard, I paired it with my Logitech MX Keys mini keyboard, which works quite well. If you already own an M4 Mac mini, what's your experience so far? Let me know in the comments below. In my case, for this price, the overall performance is excellent. It handles typical tasks like browsing with multiple tabs open while I'm coding or doing video editing and everything runs smoothly without a freeze. I'm even able to run Windows using the parallel software for mainly running Visual Studio. Considering the value for money, it's hard to find a device that offers such performance at such a price point. Now, the storage was one of my biggest drawbacks when using the Mac mini. It comes with 256 gigabytes of storage. In fact, I ran out of my storage space very quickly on the first day of using it. Here's what happened. Right after I signed into the Mac mini using the iCloud, all my messages and photos began syncing to the device and eating up the space quickly. On top of that, I installed my usual applications like Visual Studio Code, Chrome, DaVinci Resolve for video editing, and a few games here and there. Before I knew it, my disk ran out of space completely. Personally, I think Apple's storage pricing is a scam. The price significantly jumps up when you get more storage. But let me know your thoughts. What are your thoughts on Apple's pricing when it comes to storage. But in terms of storage, luckily I stumbled upon a solution that lets me turn my external SSD as my main drive. And that took me from 256 of storage to a whopping one terabyte of storage without spending a fortune. Also, my external speeds are way faster than my internal Mac mini's SSD speeds. So it was a win-win situation for me. If you are curious of what steps I took to make that happen, I've got a video that I'll link up here somewhere it's got detailed tutorials and instructions on how to set up an external SSD as your main drive on the Mac mini. Check it out and let me know if you have any questions. If you have made it so far in this video, remember to like this video and drop a comment with your favorite Mac mini feature or something you disliked about it. I'll be reading your comments. Now, the Mac mini offers great connectivity options. It's got the fast Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.3 which allows me to connect my mouse and keyboard. Talking about connectivity, this Mac mini has a total of five ports, which are quite handy before connecting multiple devices. There are two USB-C ports and three Thunderbolt 4 ports on the back. I connect my faster Thunderbolt external SSD enclosures to the back of the Mac mini while I connect the basic devices on the front of the Mac mini. Instead of using Wi-Fi, I prefer using the one gigabit ethernet. This is because most of my videos I edit reside on the NAS server that I have. Therefore, this connection enables me to edit videos remotely from my network. Also, the file transfers between my NAS and my Mac mini are super fast when I'm on the ethernet versus the Wi-Fi. Now, here are some accessories that I use with my Mac mini to take it to the next level. Link to everything is in the description below, so do check them out. First up is the monitor. I use a 55-inch high-scene U6 4K TV. 
This works great with the Mac Mini and gives me a lot of real estate to work with. The TV comes in very handy when I'm editing videos. It also helps me browse on one of the tabs on the left and then write my notes or comments or anything on the right. When it comes to keyboards, I'm a huge fan. I own several keyboards, but my go-to keyboard has always been the Logitech MX Keys Mini. It's lightweight and sleek, and the best part is I can switch between three devices with the press of a button. For the mouse, it's a very similar story. I prefer the Logitech MX Master 3 mouse because it enables me to edit my videos a lot faster, and it allows me to switch between three devices with the press of a button. I can switch between my Mac Mini, my MacBook Pro, and my work laptop with the press of a button, so that's the killer feature that I really enjoy on my devices. In addition to that, I use an OWC external SSD enclosure, which is paired with a 1TB Western Digital NVMe SSD. This is what I use to set up my external SSD as my primary drive. It utilizes Thunderbolt 4, which provides an ultra-fast performance. In fact, it's even faster than my internal Mac Mini's SSD. For the most part, I use my Mac Mini for testing and writing code, which heavily relies on the CPU performance. By the way, I also edit videos for this channel right on the trusty Mac Mini. And guess what? I usually have a whopping 10 to 15 tabs open while I'm browsing, searching for products, or searching for video ideas. But here's the surprising part. I have not experienced any performance issues while I have all these things running in parallel. Using AI directly on the local hardware has been a huge game changer. It's a perfect mix of power and practicality for everyday use. And on top of that, I have complete control over my data and I don't have to wait for cloud servers to process it. In fact, I've been super impressed with DeepSeek R1 since it installed on my Mac Mini. It's awesome to have all the data processing right on your device. Now for DeepSeek, I've been able to run 7 billion parameter model without any issues. It offers snappy responses for everyday tasks. Anything beyond the 7 billion parameter model will be hard to run on the Mac Mini. Now, I use DaVinci Resolve for editing my videos, and this works fine on the M4 Mac Mini when editing 4K videos. Scrolling through timeline is super smooth and decent, and rendering times are pretty decent as well. In my opinion, for the most of the users, the base Mac Mini performance should be sufficient if the use case is similar to what I described above. Now, let's talk about gaming. I have a dedicated gaming machine, but I did manage to play some games on the Mac Mini. They ran pretty well, but it was like playing on the lowest settings. The games I played were Counter-Strike, City Skylines, and they both had decent frame rates. Now, the other games on the App Store worked flawlessly, but those games also worked fine on your iPhones. So overall, if you're looking to play games on a Mac Mini, I would recommend that you go build a gaming PC or use a console. Let me know if you're currently using your Mac Mini for playing games and how is your Mac Mini handling those games. Also, let me know what kind of games you are playing on it in the comments below. The Mac Mini is a great machine that can be used for professionals, individuals, and for family for reviewing, learning, coding, and editing, and doing some light gaming. It does not take up too much space due to its small form factor. The base model is what I recommend getting, but keep in mind that 256 gigs of storage can be a challenge and it fills up very quickly. Well, that's it for this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below of what you think of the new M4 Mac Mini. And until next time, I'll see you in the next one.